Hey guys, Jared Wesley here of Live Traders, and it is that time of the week. It's lecture time, and this week's topic, guys, is called no-brainer trades. You want to get inside my head? Well, listen to this week's lecture, okay? I'm literally going to take all my knowledge, and I'm going to put it into a 45-minute lecture today. And we're going to do that with about 15 to 20 slides. And most of them are trades that I took or recently took, and they're all brand new, meaning the last couple few days. Um, and it's important because I want you guys to understand that trading doesn't have to be so challenging, right? I will say it's not easy, but it can be very, very simple. All right, so today we're going to simplify your trading through watching some of the trades that I have taken and looking at how helpful relative strength, well, relative weakness can be, bidding for stocks, et cetera, and so forth. Because I'm telling you, this lecture is powerful. It might be the most powerful lecture I've done in the last couple of years. Not kidding with you. Because a lot of you, you have FOMO, fear of missing out. You're over trading. You're not managing correctly. You're doing all these things you shouldn't be doing. Okay, you need to be focused. And today's lecture is not only gonna help you focus, but it's gonna show you what trades you need to be taking to make money in the markets, in any market, okay? Relative strength, relative weakness is a very important aspect, but that's not the whole lecture. That's only a piece of the lecture, okay? And you're gonna look at it and go, wow, why am I messing with all this other crap when I could be taking these great trades that you saw today, all right? If you like these lectures, guys, these videos, please click that like button smash hammer that subscribe button help a brother out guys we need to get to 400,000 subscribers come on click that subscribe button we've been stuck we've been flat we've been deadline you guys aren't watching the videos anymore but they're awesome they're incredible so hammer that subscribe button i'm jared wesley of live traders let's get to it This week's lecture topic is no-brainer trades, all right? Traders are always searching for the holy grail, right? There's that quest to make trading as easy as possible. Well, I don't know if we can make it as easy as possible, but we can certainly make it as simple as possible. Uh, and that's one of the things we're going to try to do today. Uh, and by focusing on these trades that you're going to see today and these quote, no-brainer trades, um, you're going to make your trading life a lot easier and easier meaning more fruitful, right? More profitable uh, because these patterns work 90 plus percent of the time in my opinion, from my experience. Um, in my opinion, they're also relatively straightforward and simple. I don't think it's rocket science. Um, and then after that, we'll, we can talk about a management that you might apply to it, right? Because right now or today, we're not talking a lot as much about management as we are about the actual pattern and where it happens and how it forms. Um, but you're going to see that um, these aren't the most incredibly challenging, super crazy high level trades, in my opinion anyway, and I'm hoping to impart that knowledge in you guys today, uh, because I think we all want to have uh, a stress-free trading experience to at least the most extent possible, right? It won't always be that way. Every once in a while, we'll get a cookie jar trade, um, but we do our best to stay away from those, okay, by being smart. And that's where your pre-trade checklist comes in. That's where your money management comes in, et cetera, and so forth. But those are topics for a different day. All right, so before we get into that, because I happened to see it on the news the, a week or so ago, I thought, you know what, why not? Let's throw in a when will the insanity stop segment because it's something that just happened. It popped up on like Apple News. That's how crazy it was. Uh, did you guys see this? I pulled it up off Twitter, but it did pop up on my Apple News. Um, a movie director loses $10.5 million of Netflix's money trading options. Trading options, right? Justin, Netflix gave $11 million to a movie director to make a movie. The movie director instead lost all the money trading options in the stock market per the New York Times. Okay, there it is. Uh, filmmaker Carl Rinch was given $11 million by Netflix to make a movie. He instead deposited $10.5 million of that into his personal Charles Schwab account. My guess is he probably thought, I need more than $11 million to make this movie. Let's go make some money trading options. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know what's going to happen to him. Netflix can eat the 10 or $11 million, I'm sure. It's not fun, but if you're going to lose $11 million, might as well be Netflix's money, I suppose. Um, so 
My point is, you still think money management's a joke. Still not going to listen when I tell you to only risk $10 per trade. Uh, there are a lot of foolish people out there. You know, obviously this person has some skill set because Netflix gave them $11 million to make a movie. But guess what their skill set is not in? Trading. It's not in trading. So just because you're a, potentially a famous film director, I don't know who this person is, but doesn't mean you're going to be a good trader, right? And that's a lot of money to lose, okay? And that's right, Ollie. If he can lose it, you can too. Um, so you just take a look at this stuff and people do crazy things. And here's the even more insane part of this. Smart people doing dumb things, okay? We see it every four years in November, you know? Smart people doing dumb things, right? My point though is, don't think you're better than the market. You're not. And the second you start to believe that, the market will humble you, all right? And this is a case where, again, I'm assuming this person is a decent movie director. Netflix gave them 11 million bucks, uh, and they're probably pretty decent at that, right? That thing, directing movies, they're probably pretty good at. They're just not very good at trading as witnessed by losing $11 million, okay? Couldn't be me, exactly. All right, so now that we're past this, there are no more text slides. Everything else is a chart. Everything else is a chart. And I believe almost every single chart in here is from the last three days, okay? Uh, I believe this week, actually. If I'm wrong on one, I apologize, but I'm pretty sure almost every chart in here is from the last few days, okay? Um, the goal here is to get you inside my head. What am I thinking when I take a trade? Why do I take it? Now, this isn't to say I don't make mistakes. I do make mistakes. But most of the time, I try to stay on the right side of the market. So, Microsoft. This is from yesterday, okay? This was the trade that I, whatever you want to call it, chastised myself for not taking yesterday okay um, because stupid is as stupid does sir so the one thing we're going to talk about here is relative strength and relative weakness is going to be a huge factor in every single slide that you're going to see there's one slide that it's not a factor in one one okay that's it out of the next 15 slides there's one every other slide has some form of relative strength or relative weakness in it why? Because it's the main factor in what I look for before I take a trade. I'm still obviously looking for patterns, but it's the main factor in what I'm looking for. And the reason is, is I don't want to have to be perfect with my market decisions. Does this make sense? Look, there are some days where the market is just very tough to read. I think we would all agree with that. There are at least a day a week, the market is like one of those like, man, not really exactly sure what the market's going to do today. Well, what do you do on those days? Nothing, possibly. You might just sit on your hands. But if you can find stocks that have relative strength and relative weakness with a pattern, you will have a much easier trading time. Okay? The other thing I want to impart in you is it's very hard to discern relative strength and relative weakness two minutes into the day. Yes, I understand the market could be gapping down and the stock's gapping up and it, and it rips higher. But that could roll over in the next two minutes. By waiting five to 15 minutes, by waiting five to 15 minutes, you will have a far better understanding of what the stock actually is, strong or weak to the market or the same as the market. So we'll look at Microsoft here, okay? Microsoft is a wedge flag. See the flag wedge pattern right here? Okay, and if you're not sure, you're like, I have no idea what you're talking about, Jared. Let's show you real quickly. Okay, there it is right there. Okay, if you were to draw that and draw that, there's your little flag. Okay, let's make them pink so you guys can see it. That's your little flag area. Okay, it's a pattern right out of the textbook. Right out of the textbook. So, I like the flag pattern, but this trade starts before the flag pattern happens. It starts right off the open. So I see the Qs go up for three two-minute bars, and I see Microsoft go up as well. But then what happens? The Qs start to go lower. Microsoft pulls back a little bit. The Qs continue lower. Microsoft stays near, not at, but near the high of the day. 
the market continues to go lower. Microsoft continues to consolidate near the high of the day. And that's where this these last three bars are right here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Bars number six, seven, and eight are not at, but they're near the high of the day. They're right around that 380.50 area. Okay? And then you get the market looking like this, puts in a little bottoming tail. So you want to do a couple things here. You want to look at the market and go, well, is it likely to double bottom? Is there some form of support to the left on a higher time frame? Um, is there a pre-market area here? Is the market likely to bounce? Because if it is, Microsoft's going to blast off. If the market drips lower, like it kind of did here, it went a little bit lower, not significantly lower, then Microsoft's likely going to stay where it is, if not go higher. And that's exactly what happened. Right. If you take the pink line, that red bar is a consolidation bar. The market puts in this tiniest, this little area right here. In fact, let's let's pull this up real fast. OK, let's just take that right there. OK, blow this up. I always mess this up. Where's my zoom function? What is it? Control plus plus. All right. OK, that's what I want you guys looking at right here do you see that right there bottoming tail green bar red bar just that just that little six minute area bottoming tail green bar red bar just that okay was responsible for that was responsible for this let's do it over here on the left was responsible for that okay that's how much relative strength the microsoft had no this isn't hindsight bias because it says watch microsoft over 380.50 and then 11 minutes later, it says, watch Microsoft for a two-minute buy setup around 380.50 to 380. It said 280, but I corrected it 380. Why? Well, it ripped higher, a dollar fifty higher. Okay, I believe it went to 382 from 380. Your stop loss on this would have been about a dollar. So it went one and a half to one. Okay, it ripped out of that wedge, that that um, flag pattern. And then it pulled back. Where did it pull back to? Exactly the area you want it to pull back to. Pulled back to minor price support. Sure, it went slightly lower, but remember, it's an area. It's an area. Okay, so then you look at it and you're like, watch Microsoft for a two-minute bounce. Guys, I'm looking at Microsoft for a two-minute bounce on the pullback, during the pullback, at the pullback. Be long before it ever gets there, you're thinking to yourself, what would be an ideal situation here? right? What would be a perfect scenario? As the stock's moving higher, like, well, shoot, I didn't take it at 380.50 right there. I didn't take that. So what do I need now? Well, I need the stock to move up and then I need to pull back to 380.50. Sure as shit, it pulls back to 380.50. You get in at 380.50 and you put your stop right down there again, 379.50. It bounces. Note, it pulls back to 380, but notice if you gave it the really, really, really tight stop, you would have stopped out by a few pennies, wouldn't you? And then it rips higher, okay, and continues to go higher. One sec, guys. One sec. Sorry, guys. My apologies. All right. So my point that I'm making here is this. I am looking for this pullback entry on the first or second bar of the pullback. In fact, I'm looking for the pullback entry while it's still going higher over here. That's how people always, well, how did you know that was going to happen? I didn't know it was going to happen. I just wanted that to happen. And if it happened, we would be ready for it, right? We would be ready for it. And sure enough, pulled back, retested, and then it ripped. And it went $2 higher, $3 higher, whatever it was, okay? So when you look at this, okay, yeah, my chat timestamp is two hours earlier because I'm in Arizona, all right? But when you look at this, you go, wow, look at the strength it has to the market. I don't really actually need a lot of help from the market to get this thing to work. And it gave me a pattern, too, actually, right? It gave me a wedge flag, and it gave me a buy setup. So it's not some hocus pocus like, oh, it's just relative strength. No, it's relative strength with a pattern. It's both. It's relative strength with a pattern. Relative strength with a pattern. And when it comes to these pullbacks, you have to be anticipating the pullback. I didn't mean take it, but thinking about what would an ideal situation look like, right? What would an ideal situation look like? Well, 
The flag works. If you took the flag, great. And then once the flag rips, ideally, it pulls back to the top end of that range, which is minor price support, and then puts in a buy setup and goes higher. Mind-bending stuff, isn't it? Mind-bending, I know. I've just blown your mind like I'm a NASA rocket scientist because you're like, Jared, that's like page one of PTS. I know. If this isn't rocket science. That's just a normal lower high, lower high, lower high, doji bar, change of color bar at minor price support with relative strength. That's all it is. I'm not in reinventing the wheel here. But what makes the trade easy is the relative strength. Right? The pattern is good. But remember, you can take a buy setup that's, that's in a terrible environment and it'll fail. But because the stock has so much relative strength, the odds of it failing are slim to none. The market would have to really lose its shit. I mean, just die for this thing to fail. Which you could even give it a maybe a slightly tighter stop loss because of that. Meaning, here's an example. Here's an example. You start this buy setup at 380.50 and you give it the wide stop, 379.50. After the retest right here, see it right there? Add and raise your stop to 379.75, 380, right? Raise it up after that. It shouldn't break that double bottom at that point. If it does, you don't want to be in it anymore, okay? You don't want to be in it anymore. All right, let's move on. Let's do this again. Three bar play, relative weakness with room lower. Oh, yesterday again. See, what you guys are missing here is that's actually a topping tail. See that right there? That's a topping tail, just in case you're curious. So when you're looking at this going, Jared, that's not a wide range bar. It is. It is. This bar starts where my cursor is way up here and goes all the way down to 128. This bar is actually like a dollar seventy-five. It's really, really big. Then you get a narrow range resting bar. Now, is this one a little more aggressive? Yes, why? Because it's happening five minutes into the day. But take a look. I, I, mis I misaligned these by a little bit. I was hoping to get them perfect, but I missed them by like a bar. What's the market doing? What's Airbnb doing? What's the market doing? What's Airbnb doing? Let's do it one more time for those of you not paying attention. What is the market doing and what is Airbnb doing? Market went green, green, green. Airbnb went red, red. Lift a little bottoming tail. Green, green, red, red. Green, green, red, red. Relative weakness. Now, I would agree this is early. This is a little bit early. But it doesn't take away from the fact that it's a bona fide three bar play that has relative weakness early in the morning. The market bounces up, sells off the stock tanks. 931, watch Airbnb under 128 lower. 933, watching Airbnb under 128 closely. What mistake did I make on this? I didn't pay up for it. That was the mistake I made. I didn't pay up for it. I wanted 128.25. It went to 128.17. Okay, you see this bar right here? I missed the initial entry. And right there, it bounced back up to 128.17. And I told the room, 128.25. I took 100 shares of this. And I was trying to get 1,000 shares of it, okay? And it just tanked lower. And it went some $2 plus plus on a 75 cent stop. I got a little bit too greedy in a way. I didn't want to pay up for it. But it's a bona fide wide bar, narrow bar drop relative weakness. I'm not reinventing the wheel again. Just relatively weak with a pattern. Okay, let's do it again. Amazon, yesterday, Amazon. Okay, let's start with the market. Green, green, green on the cues. Green, green, green on the cues. One more time, say it loud and proud. Green, green, green on the cues. What does Amazon have? Amazon has a topping tail doji bar, a green bar, and a red bar. All right? Topping tail. Doji, which is basically a red bar, right? That topping tail is red. Over here, green bar with a topping tail. Third bar is a red bar with a little bottoming tail. So Amazon is relatively weak in the first five minutes of the day. We're not trading it during this time. I'm simply saying, watch Amazon, it's weak. It's showing weakness to the market. When the market's going long, Amazon is actually near the low of the day. That doesn't mean to rush into it. It just means this better be one of your top watches. Now, could Amazon turn the corner and show relative strength 10 minutes later? It could, 
But I don't know the future, and at the moment, it's showing me that it's relatively weak, which means I need to pay attention to it, okay? So focus on Amazon, and the market puts in a little sell setup. And as the market puts in a sell setup, it moves lower, and Amazon does the same. It moves lower and goes a little sideways. The market goes a little sideways, right? So if you were to draw one more of these pink lines, and they're off by like one bar, but you get my point. So as the market's doing this, that's what Amazon's doing, right? Amazon's just kind of hanging out, and then the market goes lower, Amazon gives you a breakdown right at 146.50. You get in at 146.50, your stop's 147, could be a little tighter, and it drops a dollar, a little, a little less than a dollar. And then what happens? It bounces back because the market ultimately later on bounced back. Now, this trade isn't super early. It's 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14 minutes into the day. It's basically a 9.45 trade. But it has relative weakness and a pattern. Relative weakness and a pattern. Relative weakness and a pattern. Okay, let's do it again. We have a lot more slides to get through. A lot. Okay, what do we have here? Another breakdown with relative weakness. 9.42, watch NVIDIA. Sorry, let's call it 934. Watch NVIDIA under 481. Why? Why would I possibly be watching this stock again? Because the market went three bars up and NVIDIA didn't, right? NVIDIA was struggling to push higher while the market was going up, okay? While the market was going up. Then NVIDIA pulls back to the low of the day and has a two to three bar consolidation. Right, right here, two to three bar consolidation. A little two minute, if you went into the one minute, it's a longer breakdown on the one minute chart. The market puts in a sell set up, NVIDIA tanks. And then you have an opportunity later to go long on NVIDIA at one, at 478, sorry, at 478. Look, bounced, 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 right? Once it starts putting in equal highs and it stops putting in lower lows, once it stops putting in lower lows, it puts in a higher high and a higher low and a lower high and a higher low. All of a sudden it becomes interesting long, but watch Nvidia under 481, 942, remember two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, and again, 945 trade. Watch Nvidia under 480.50. That's exactly where it is right there. It's actually 480.50, I believe, but whatever. Drops, bounces, Guys, watch NVIDIA for a two-minute sell setup. Watch NVIDIA for a two-minute sell setup. Is that not a textbook sell setup? Could it have bounced a little bit more? Maybe up to 480, maybe. Yeah, it could have. But it moved up two, what, two, four, six, eight, ten 10 minutes, five bars. And there's your sell setup at 478 by 479. And you got to move down to 475, $3 move. Textbook, textbook, textbook. But it all started with relative weakness to the market. It all started with relative weakness to the market. Okay? And you can even see that over here. That little sell setup is right there. Okay? Right there. So you take a look at NVIDIA, sell setup, market pop back up, market pulls back, NVIDIA tanks. Okay? Relative weakness to the market. I didn't need a lot of market help to make this work. All right? Keep going. And by the way, NVIDIA on the daily chart, you break under that area and it has room to drop. Not a bad area. Once you get under that like 478, 479 area, which means that sell setup was pretty good. That's the daily chart of NVIDIA, right? A couple few bars down, green bar, and then it breaks under that area. Let's keep doing it. A lot more charts to get through. All right, relative strength buy setup. Two days ago, strong while the market was weak. When the market moves higher, the stock rips textbook. Guys, Roku had a green bar. The Q's had a green bar. Roku had a narrow range green bar. The market lost its shit. The market had a full level engulfing bar on bar number two. Roku puts in a narrow range red bar. Third bar of the day on the Q's, it puts in a new low and just keeps going down, getting hammered. What's Roku do? It's not even at the low of the day yet. It's almost, it's pretty close to the low of the day, isn't it? Market starts to bounce, Roku rips. Market pulls back, leaves a bottoming tail, and there's your play, right there. There's your play. Let's take a look at it over here. 96.60, stop low of the day, give yourself a little bit of room. Market puts in a bottoming tail, and the stock rips. So again, let's draw another line on it. 
That's how much ahead of the market. I think I'm one bar off there, something like that. That's how strong Roku is to the market, right? The market's actually pulling back slightly and Roku's already pivoting to go up. The market finally bounces a little bit and Roku just goes for a ride, like a monster ride. Strong while the market was weak when the market moves higher the stock rips. And if you guys remember, that was the 60 minute chart of Roku. This is the 60 minute chart of Roku. Somebody asked me in, you know, could I do a lecture on multiple time frame analysis? Well, multiple time frame analysis suggests that the 60 minute is breaking out. It's got like an ascending triangle, right? If we kind of put a flat top on it and then do this, right? It's kind of our ascending triangle. It breaks out above that area. Your job, find an entry. Find an entry. Let's go back to Roku. This is the bee's knees. You had a little bit of a buy setup or a retest, whatever you want to call it, with relative strength. And the thing went for a ride. Now, did I expect it to go $7? No. Well, you only needed like a dollar, maybe two. No big deal for a $100 stock. Juice box, exactly right. So we have to ask ourselves, again, I have a lot more charts to go through, but why do we make trading so hard on ourselves? I just showed you, and we're not done, I just showed you four trades from the last two days. Three on one day and one on another day. I would say almost all of which I commented on in the room. I commented on them in the room. Not every one of them, but most of them I commented on them. I think it was five trades I've shown so far. These are like duh patterns, duh, no brainers. Okay, we make it hard on ourselves, exactly right. So let's, let's do it again. Here's the repetition part, let's do it again. Meta, same day, right? Monday, same day. What do we have? Market goes green, red, red. Meta goes green, red, red. But what's the difference? How much green and red? So while yes, Meta did put in two red bars and so did the Qs. The Qs put in a new low by a significant margin. Meta was like a 50%, maybe 60% retracement. So Meta pulls back 60%. The market pulls back 130%. Say it loud, say it proud. Meta pulls back 60%. The market pulls back 130%. Meta has relative strength. Does that mean that I'm going to jump into Meta right here? No. It's just now on my radar. It's like, whoa, this stock is doing something special, something unusual, something different. I want to watch it. I want to keep an eye on it. I don't want to lose track of it. So what happens? The market bounces. Meta rips. Market bounces. Meta rips. Market pulls back. Meta pulls back. This is your opportunity. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22 minutes into the day, 9.52. Meta leaves a nice bottoming tail, right? Right around a 50% retracement. Change of color bar, bottoming tail. Market's pulling back. And again, if we kind of pull that over here. Nice. Market puts in a bottoming tail. Meta puts in a bottoming tail. Your entry is 338 on Meta. Stops 337. I commented on this one too, but it was two days ago, so I didn't save the chat log. I apologize. Chops around, chops around, bounces, pulls back, bounces. It's holding higher lows, higher low, higher low, higher low, higher low. Now, was this the smoothest trade ever? No. Meta chopped, but it worked. Can't deny that it worked. Went almost up to 340 on a dollar stop. Okay, and ultimately did later on. Why do we make trading so hard? Why do we do this to ourselves? Tesla, I had to put it in from yesterday. So now what are we up to like? Five trades from yesterday, two or three trades from the day before? Okay, what do we have? Well, a stock that frustrated me a little bit yesterday, early on, okay, early on. And then Tesla decided it was gonna catch a bid Right, and I mean a bid. This thing just went to the moon. 
You take a look at the markets, and this is a good example of a stock that had a little bit of weakness early on that turned into tremendous strength. Guys, take a look at the cues from right around 11.30 to 1 o'clock. What did the cues do? I could literally put this in the PTS textbook. That's how good this is. What did the cues do from 11.30 to 1 o'clock? Got pounded. They literally dropped from just under 391 down to 388. What did Tesla do during the exact same time frame? In fact, let's do this so you guys can see this, okay? Let's just do this. All right. Whoops, that's an outline. I need an outline. Give me the outline. All right, no fill. Let's make it pink and let's make it larger. Okay. Let's take that. I'm just going to go straight down. I'm going to go straight down with it. Do you see any difference here? Do you see any difference in the box? One went straight down, the other one went dead sideways at or near the high of the day. And if I had a moving average, it'd probably be pretty close to that. So when the market finally comes down to some support in here, right? Because if we take a look at that, you're in an area, right? Pull this up just a little, in an area of support, it should bounce at some point. And what happens? It does. And then what does Tesla do? Goes for another ride. This, I mean, there's a page in PTS that has something almost identical to this. I think it's a Wells Fargo chart from a while ago. Okay? Market tanks, Tesla stays at or near the high of the day. Note the green line, it's just holding this line. While the market goes lower, Tesla continues to hold and rest. So the second the market gets a little bit of strength or bounces even a little, Tesla's going to go for another move. And that another move went from 243 up to 247. Come on now. It's a $4 move. Stop loss was like 243-ish. I'm sorry, the stop loss is like 241. The entry is like 243, give or take. There it is, 242.70 by 241.70. There it is. Come on. Seriously. Why do we make trading so hard? Maybe I just what I should, okay, why do we make trading so hard? Let's do it again. Oh my gosh. From today. From today. Microsoft, 382.50 for a third and 383 for a third. Use 385 as the stop loss. What was I thinking? What in the world was Jared thinking, this crazy man? Not many people said they took this trade today. Okay, what do we have there? First bar of the day, green cues, wide range, red Microsoft. Second bar of the day, green cues, red Microsoft. Third bar of the day, green cues. Third bar of the day, Microsoft, topping tail. Fourth bar of the day, green cues. Fourth bar of the day, topping tail, Microsoft. Fifth bar of the day, tiny little topping tail on Microsoft, or sorry, on the cues. Big red bar on Microsoft. Next, little tiny, look, let's do this. We gotta do this again. I, we just have to do this again, okay? Sorry, I just, just, I can't resist. Okay. Move this over. Do you see what is happening here? This, these two red bars on the queues right there, those two red bars were these big, massive red bars on Microsoft. I want you to say it again. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Bar six and seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Six and seven. Those are the bars on Microsoft. So Microsoft is already starting to go lower. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So yeah, bars five and six right there are bars five and six right here. Let's do it. Let's see if we can do it one more time. See if I can put both of these on the screen at the same time. I need you guys to see this with me. I do. I need you to do, see this, okay? because you're missing some stuff, I'm telling you. Right there, let's put that in there. See if we can bring this one up too. Oh, I just messed it up, ah, sorry guys. Okay, count them. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Count them, one, two, 
three, four, five, and six. Look at those two freaking bars on the, on the queues. Look at those bars on Microsoft. Let's do it again. Look at the bars on the queues. They're the tiniest little red bars you've ever seen in your life, and they're the biggest red bars you've ever seen on your life on Microsoft. Holy shit. And you guys are, I don't know what I want to do with my, my, my Microsoft. It's got insane relative weakness. Hence, look at the call. Look at the trade. I'm waiting for this thing to bounce back up. I missed the early trade. Let's let it bounce back up into minor price resistance and then they had a sell set up. And you know what happened? It tanked and the market didn't even give us very much help. Look at these two bars here. Let's do one more. I know I'm getting vocal today, but sometimes you just have to look around and be like, what are you doing? What were you thinking? Oh, keep messing that up. Let's try it one more time. Look at that. This stock was already going lower when the market was going sideways. Already going lower when the market is going sideways. And the market finally puts in a red bar. Microsoft tanks. 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 It's about the easiest money you're going to get. Guys, just FYI, we bidded for this. Which means when I made this post... The price was not yet at 382.50 or 383, right? This is 944, right? 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14. What's it? 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, right? 12, 14, right there. On that green bar, on that green bar, I made this post. On that green bar, I made this post. So guys, let's, let's bid. Let's bid for Microsoft. 382.50, 383. I am waiting for it to come back to this area. That's the range. I gave it a super wide stop. You don't have to give it that wide of a stop. Okay? You don't have to give it that wide of a stop. Jared, the three green bars bouncing. No, you're missing the entire concept. See, you guys, you have to separate things. Okay? I get this question a lot. And P.S., you've been around a long time. You should know this. Okay? I'll give you an extreme example, then we'll come back to Microsoft. If a stock goes up eight green bars in a row while the market is red, most people would say, oh, that's relative strength, right? Say the market's red and a stock goes up eight green bars. And then the market goes up three bars and the stock pulls back three bars. The novice says, oh, it's relatively weak. I'm going to repeat it in case you missed it. Imagine a stock goes up eight green bars in a row. The stock goes up eight green bars in a row and the market goes down. You immediately think relative strength for the stock. You immediately think that. And you should because it is. And then the market bounces for three bars and the stock pulls back for three bars. And you go, oh my gosh, the stock has relative weakness. Is that relative weakness? Let me spare you the time. The answer is no. The answer is unequivocally no. The stock was up eight green bars in a row. The stock needed a resting period because it was up so much. Now let's go back. Let's go back to Microsoft. The stock was down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven bars in a row. It needed a break. Seven bars in a row at a little bit of support to the left, isn't it? Seven bars in a row down to a little bit of support. And the last one was a bit of a wide range. So when it bounces back up, it's not showing relative strength. I'm not concerned in any way, shape, or form. I want the stock to bounce so I can get on it, right? I want the stock to bounce so I can find an entry on it, so I can catch a ride. And then what happens? We bid for it 382.50, 383. Stock drops, and this thing went much lower than that. My goodness, let's do it again. Incredible relative weakness with a breakdown. This is from today. We missed this one and we missed it bad. We missed it and we missed it bad. The only thing I didn't have time to do was throw in my comment about Meta, right? Because I made a comment on this stock 
And let's see if I can find it real fast. There it is. Let's let's put it in there. Let's put it on in there. Just I'm putting these in there in case you guys think I do this. I'm putting them in there so that you guys can see that this isn't some hindsight biased lecture. Right? I'm not sitting there after the fact going, oh my gosh, look at all those things we should have traded. Right? These happen in real time. Right? So if you take a look at this one, sorry guys, I gotta pull that down. Okay. Watch meta under 337.80. Okay? Looks lower. Where's 330? Oh my gosh, it's right there. When was this posted? 949. What's this? 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. Right there. Right basically as it's happening. When it dropped and pulled back, we should have been all over this thing. On the initial drop, we should have been all over it on the bounce. Then you're the man, Aaron. You're the man. And I shriveled up. Okay? Like little prunes. Little raisins. Okay? Look at that. Look at that. Look at the market. 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 You tired of me saying it? Do it one more time. Look at that. Look at the market. What did Meta do the first three bars of the day? What did the Qs do the first three bars of the day? The exact opposite is the answer. The exact opposite. Okay? Take a look at it. There's the line. And then the market finally gives it up and Meta just loses its shit. Tanks. Unbelievable. Right? This is easy money trading. And the one last slide of the day that has nothing to do with relative strength or relative weakness is Apple from yesterday. Why did I put this in here? Because this is what it looks like when a stock looks very similar to the market. Identical? No. Similar. Identical? No. Similar. So the market went up a couple few bars. Apple went up a little bit. Then the market pulled back. Apple pulled back. Apple's got a little bit of relative strength to the market. A little bit, right? Not a ton. A little bit. So market pulls back. Apple pulls back. Market bounces. Apple bounces. Market goes kind of sideways. Apple goes kind of sideways. Why do I bring this up? I bring it up. Because once you get to a certain point, Apple becomes tradable. I think for me, this was a tough trade to take right here. Could you have argued to take it? Maybe, maybe, right? Maybe. But now you can't argue against it because Apple moved up, put in a higher high, and they're all higher lows. You can see it over here, right? On the left, all higher lows, higher lows, higher lows, higher lows, put in a higher high, pulls back to an area of support. What's the market do? Same thing. Moves up, pulls back to an area of support. This is an obvious area for the market to bounce. It's an obvious area for the market to bounce. It ripped, it's strong, high or high. It's going to pull back and probably find support and bounce. What does Apple do? Pulls back to support and bounces. So Apple had slight, very subtle relative strength. Subtle. But you didn't need that much relative strength because the market was giving you what you needed and this was a trade on Apple around 11 o'clock. 190.25 by 190 and boom, it went a dollar-ish, a little less. Guys, the idea today was to get you a little bit further or closer to being inside my head because all of the charts we looked at happened Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday of this week. And I'm pretty sure had we taken all of those, we would have made them more than a month's salary in three days. Okay? Where I'm going with this big picture is stop the bullshit. I'm speaking to myself too. Stop the bullshit. You know what the best trades look like. When I showed these to you, you probably weren't like, Jared, I, I, didn't, I don't see it. I don't see it, Jared. I don't. No, you're probably like, yeah, I see it. I see it. So the question is twofold. One, why would you take anything else? And two, why wouldn't you take these? Why would you take anything other than these? And why wouldn't you take these? The answer is stupid no balls. I just answered both questions. You, you, if you're taking anything other than this stuff, that's stupidity. Or you just, 
you're a glutton for punishment, okay? And two, because you have raisins in your pants instead of brass in your pockets. And that's it. And I'm guilty. I am absolutely guilty. There is no excuse because none of this was hindsight. None of it. Let me go back. Mentioned. Meta. Mentioned. It wasn't like we didn't see it. Let's do it one more time. Oh my gosh, Microsoft mentioned it wasn't like we didn't see it. Let's, here's another one. NVIDIA mentioned two times. It wasn't like we didn't see it. Here's another one. Oh my gosh, Airbnb mentioned it wasn't like we didn't see it. Another time, Microsoft mentioned it wasn't like we didn't see it. You guys tired of hearing me say those words? 80% of the charts in here today were mentioned in the chat log or as official traits. It wasn't like we didn't see them. And I believe there's about 10 trades we went over today. About, roughly 10. Every single one of them worked. But yet we find ourselves trading dog shit. Tell our paper. I'm kidding. But you get my point. Why? Do we trade anything other than this stuff is the question I have for you. Now, I'm not saying you can't take other trades. I'm simply saying those other trades should have similar attributes as the trades we just looked at today. And if they don't, you have to really genuinely ask yourself, what am I doing? Why am I wasting my time with that? And one or two of these will stop out here or there. They will, oh well, you take your stop, you move on, okay? The other question is kind of what Ben is saying. Great lecture. I watched several of these in real time and knew they looked good. And like Aaron said, I'm fighting the psychology. Aaron took the um, Metatrade, made a month's salary. It's fantastic. It's what I want to hear. It's what I want to see. And I'm guilty of this myself. I'm not talking at you. I'm talking with you because I have done the same things. Okay? I have done the same things. Impatience. FOMO, that's the reason you might jump in something too soon. And then the, sh the shrivel effect, why you won't take them with these when you see them, especially if they're 15, 20 minutes into the day. You've had a long enough opportunity to understand that Microsoft was really a great short today. You've had a long enough opportunity to understand that Meta was a great short today. These weren't happening a minute into the day. They both happened 15, 20 minutes into the day. So, I hope the peak inside my head was helpful for you because these are things I need to work on as well. I need to be better. I see them. It's not a matter of not seeing them. I see almost all of them. Taking them is a different issue. And every once in a while, I'll take like an Amazon trade. That was too soon. Right idea? Too soon. Be patient. Wait for your pitch. When you get your pitch, you swing at it. Don't sit back and take when you get the pitch you've been looking for. And most of these are pre-planned, meaning we're watching them for a good five minutes, 10 minutes before they come back to the place we want to trade them, like Microsoft today. I was watching it for six minutes before it came into the area that I wanted. So what do you do? You just place your order. You put a limit order in there, and you're like, let it come back and, and trigger my order. And when it does, I'll hear it, and then I can, I can manage from there, scan some other stuff. So I hope that you guys learned a little bit more about how to be better traders, how to simplify your trading, how to make life easier with relative strength, relative weakness stocks. Um, and hopefully you'll apply some of these techniques to help you make more money. I'm Jared Wesley of Live Traders. We'll get back at it again next week.